All right, so this is another video on a titration of a weak acid with a strong base. Uh, so I'm going to point out what the titration curves looks like and go through some calculations at different points along the way. And we might split those into separate videos for the sake of time. So what we've got here, this is a graph. And some things you'll notice about your titration of a weak acid is that, uh, is that you will see that at equivalence, the pH is going to be above 7. So what's happening during this reaction, you're starting with a weak acid. As it reacts, it is going to, that weak acid is going to be converted into its conjugate base. So when you reach equivalence, you're going to have pure um, weak base solution. So the pH, therefore, is going to be above 7 there because it's going to be a basic solution. So pH is starting below 7 and equivalence is above 7. You'll notice that the slope of it, how it goes up dramatically at first and then it kind of flattens out for a while. Here, it flattens out, you'll notice that is when you're in your buffer zone because you're still going to have some excess weak acid around, but then some of your weak acid will have turned into the conjugate base. And when you have both the weak acid and the conjugate base present, you have a buffer. So notice my pH here is staying fairly steady. Um, I'm going to write down the reaction for the, the titration reaction that's occurring. So along this path, what happens, you've got pure... Um, HOCl initially, you're adding some strong base to it, so you're adding hydroxide ions, and that is going to uh, turn some of your weak acid into the conjugate base, and it's also going to produce some water. So this is the reaction that's occurring um, between this point and this point right here. At the beginning, it's all HOCl. At the end, it's all OCl minus. When you're in between, you've got a little bit of both. Uh, over here at the end, you'll notice if we keep going and adding excess hydroxide, my pH will get very high. A little bit of pH really like 13 to 14. And what's present in the solution at this point is the conjugate base, which is the OCl minus ion, as well as some excess hydroxide ions that you've added. So thinking about how to find the pH at various points along the way. Initially, if you're asked to find the initial pH of your solution, it is just a pure solution, a solution of pure weak acid. So this is just use your Ka value, set up a nice chart um, to solve for your H plus concentration. And we'll do that in a minute. If you're in the middle part, you've got both the weak acid and the conjugate base present. So you can still use your Ka expression and do an ice chart. You will just find that when you do that, you'll have initial values for both um, your acid and your base set up in your ice chart. The other option would be to use this equation, pH equals pKa and log A over HA. Make sure that you only use this equation if you're here in the buffer zone, if you have both A and HA present. When you are here, the next point we'll look at is at equivalence. At equivalence, what you have is a solution of pure weak base. So in this case, you should be using the Kb value, um, set up your ice chart, solve for X um, to find your pOH, and then you can find your pH value. Over here, once you get beyond equivalence, you're just dealing with excess hydroxide. So you can do some stoichiometry to figure out how much excess hydroxide do I have and what is the pH there. So we will walk through a couple of these scenarios. So scenario number one is if you have pure um, weak acid. So I would always recommend that you write out the, whatever's happening in the equilibrium system or the reaction that's happening. So initially, I've got pure weak acid. So what's happening is my weak acid's in water. It's going to dissociate a little bit. And I drew a two-way arrow because it's a weak acid rather than a strong acid. They will be in equilibrium. If it had been a strong acid, I would draw a one-way arrow. All of this would turn into the ions. But weak acid, there's going to be some of each species present. Um, and I'm going to set up an ice chart. I'm going to say I-C-E. And initially, I have one molar of my weak acid. Remember, ice charts, you should use concentrations, use molarities. I've got none of this to begin with. It's going to dissociate by some amount x. So these will get increased by some amount x. Remember, the value x is stoichiometric. So since this is a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, it's just x, x, x. Um, if there had been a 2 in here somewhere, you'd have to put 2x there. And at equilibrium, this will be 1 minus x, and this will be x, and this will be x. So that means you, you go along and you can plug this into your Ka expression. So remember, Ka, uh, any Ka expression is just products over reactants. So in this case, my products are H plus 
and OCl minus. My reactants are HOCl. Okay, I go plug these in. I end up with X squared divided by 1. And we leave off that minus X because our K value is pretty small. And so um, that means my X value is going to be pretty small. So 1 minus X is just going to essentially be 1. So I'm going to leave that as just 1. And my Ka value would be given to you in the problem. And in this case, the Ka is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. So if you set this up, notice that if you solve for x, x gives you your hydrogen ion concentration. And if you set this up in your calculator and solve for it, you will find that, um, I don't know if I wrote down what my x value is, but you'll find a value for x. And then if you take the negative log of x, that means it's, you're taking the negative log of the hydrogen concentration, so that gives you the pH, and you will find that the pH is 3.73. So, you know, try that, plug in your calculator, see if you agree. So that's step one. Initially, it's just a pure weak acid. Um, the next scenario we might see is when you have added some of your strong base, but you're not at equivalence yet. So we started out with one liter of one molar HOCl. So that means we had a mole of our weak acid. And now at this point, we've added 300 mils of one molar NaOH. So we've added 0.3 moles of my strong base. So what that means, if I were to write out this reaction that's occurring, I've got um, HOCl in my solution. I'm adding some hydroxide ions to it. And I'm going to draw this as a one-way arrow. So when you're thinking about adding a strong base to your weak acid, or if you're adding a strong acid to a weak base, think of that as being a one-way arrow. These are going to essentially all get used up um, and convert into products. So my HOCl and hydroxide will combine. My hydroxide is going to take a hydrogen um, to make water, and that's going to leave an OCl minus behind. So this is my reaction that's occurring. Uh, so this is basically a stoichiometry problem where you want to ask yourself, how much of each reactant do I have at the beginning? And uh, you will find that one reactant is in excess and one reactant is limiting. So if I, again, look at my molarities and volumes, my HOCl, I have one liter of 1.0 molar. So that means I have one mole of HOCl present. My hydroxide, I added 300 milliliters of 1.0 molar. So that means I added 0.3 moles of hydroxide ions. And if you look at that, you notice how these react in a one-to-one -one ratio, but I have a lot fewer hydroxides than I do um, my HOCl. So that means that all of my hydroxides are going to get used up. It's my limiting reactant. And only some of my um, weak acid is going to get used up. So there's excess weak acid. So that means after this reaction is over, I'm still going to have 0.7 moles of my weak acid around. All of my hydroxide will be used up. Water we're going to ignore because it doesn't affect our calculations. And you will find that you started with no um, conjugate base at the beginning. But after this reaction is done, the 0.3 moles of my weak acid that got used up have now been converted into the conjugate base. So what I have right now is I have a solution containing uh, 0.7 moles of the weak acid and 0.3 moles of the conjugate base. So you can recognize that it is a buffer. So to find the pH of it, I could go through and use this equation and say pH equals pKa, which is, would be the negative log of this K value right here. So here's my Ka value, uh, plus the log of A minus over HA, so 0.3 divided by 0.7. Another way of doing it is setting up an ice chart similar to like you have up here. And I'm going to show it that way for right now. So what you'd say is you've got, okay, you have HOCl and it's going to be in equilibrium with its conjugate base. And you're going to set up an ice chart, I, C, E. And you're going to go through and figure out the concentrations here. So you've got 0.7 moles of HOCl. My new volume at this point is 1.3 liters, right? I had one liter, I added 300 mils to it, so now I've got 1.3 liters. Uh, and I also have 0.3 moles of OCl minus. Uh, 
in 1.3 liters. So if you stop and calculate those, let's see, what do we get? This is, I've got 0.54 molar of HOCl, and I have 0.23 molar OCl minus. So again, here are these molarity values, which you could plug into this equation right here. Um, or we can use our Ka expression, just like we did in this scenario. The only difference is in this scenario, I only have an initial value. Um, when you're dealing with a buffer, you're going to have an initial value um, as well as some of your, you're going to start with some of your products as well in the initial row. So you're going to have some of your weak acid and conjugate base present in, my, in that initial column. So some of my weak acid is going to get used up. I'm going to um, make some of my products. So if I look at what they're going to be at equilibrium, this is going to be 0.54. This will be some value x. This will be 0.23. And again, I'm ignoring the change. X is going to be such a small number that this change will be insignificant. So 0.54 minus x will basically just be 0.54. Um, and then you go along and you plug it into your Ka expression, which we have written right up here. Here's your Ka expression. So if you notice, what you have is your, and I'm kind of running out of room, but Ka equals x is my H plus concentration. My OCl minus concentration is 0.23, and my HOCl concentration is 0.54. And that equals 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. So I apologize for my cramming down here at the bottom. So if you set this up and you solve for x, x will give you your hydrogen ion concentration, which ends up being 8.2 times 10 to the negative 8 if you plug that in your calculator. And if you take the negative log of your hydrogen ion concentration, you'll get the pH. So you'll find down here um, that your pH equals 7.09. I'm going to write that over here. And again, try it. Um, check your work. You can also try this calculation using um, this equation right here. You should still get 7.09. You should get the same answer. So we've done initial and somewhere along the way before equivalence. And then we'll do another video that talks about the further on points.